This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. And good morning, good afternoon, welcome, welcome. You're here live with Dr. Jeff Werber, host for the next 30 minutes here on Pet Life Radio. Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. And um, we're here for you. We're here to talk about your pets, number of ways you can get a hold of us. Love to hear from you. Um, number one is 877-385-8882. Once again, 877-385-8882. Or you can also join us here live on Google Hangouts. Very easy. You just want to log on to Pet Life Radio. Click on the Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff tab. Click on it, and you can be here live with us. Um, as I mentioned again and again, get used to doing it this way because pretty soon telemedicine, telehealth is going to be in the forefront of veterinary medicine as it is now in human medicine. You see commercials for it for humans. Well, we're doing the same thing here in veterinary medicine. So the idea of using your phone, using your computer, getting to talk to a live veterinarian, it's, it's something that's going to be uh, the future. The uh, exams will be much less expensive than going in. And it's good for everybody because oftentimes many of the things you think you need to go in for, you don't. So, uh, and um, anyway, we'll talk about that uh, a little later on and, or on a show coming up. But anyway, just to you know, go through some news items that caught my attention that might be of interest to you. First of all, teacup pets. People love teacup pets. They like the smaller or whatever. Well, there was some work done online to show that many of these teacup pets that you see are not necessarily teacup, meaning smaller versions of whatever breed that is. They're still babies. They're sometimes maybe 10 to 12 weeks of age. So they are not ready necessarily to be shipped. And by law, they're not allowed to be shipped until they're at least four months. So don't be fooled. These animals are often too young to be separated from mom and their litter mate. Socialization at that point is very important. They are not ready for solid food necessarily before 12 weeks of age. So they're eating soft foods and things like that. So just be very careful. They can become sick. They're not really ready, but they use that cuteness to sort of trick you into thinking, oh my God, that's the pup I want. And uh, so anyway, just be careful. February, National Pet Dental Health Month. We will talk about it a little bit more at the end of the show, but don't be fooled. The teeth, the mouth, oral health is critical to overall health. Some problems associated with gingivitis, infections in the mouth, the fact that the bugs, the bacteria colonize, they can colonize into the heart valve, which we call endocarditis, into the kidneys, the kidney filtration system, glomerulonephritis, these bugs, these bacteria that are cultured from these diseased organs originated in the mouth. So very important if you haven't already, now's a good time this month. A lot of veterinarians, ourselves included here in Los Angeles, are running specials to get you to come in and uh, evaluate your pets make sure they're healthy, have their teeth done. And at the end of the show, we're going to talk a little bit more about what good dental hygiene is all about. This was a nice story. There was a German shepherd named Rico, who was an Air Force dog in the Air Force squadron in Dover Air Force Base in Delaware, actually gave a military salute. Rico passed. He developed degenerative myelopathy. Anyone who knows German shepherd dogs know that degenerative myelopathy is a terrible condition. We see it most commonly in German shepherds. And um, he was uh, in retirement. He was living with his handler, a guy named Jason Spangenberg. That was really cool. He, he Actually, the dog had a bronze star. So uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Other things, other research issues, gait problems. That's like the locomotion moving issues that we see in pugs. Interestingly, because pugs aren't known. They're not like a, a dog that we typically see arthritis in as far as an orthopedic problem. And it is believed that possibly... Some of the problems that we see in gates, gait issues in pugs are actually neurologic. And there's some other issues that it's often linked to, for example, dyspnea, some breathing issues, which may also start in the brain. So there some researchers are at some of the schools are doing that now, looking into pugs and some of their neurologic problems that they have. Ah, here's a big one. This may touch many of you. It's going to become even more of an issue as time goes on. This out of Canada, which is now just decriminalized marijuana, as has California. Colorado already there. Some number of states in the United States have already decriminalized marijuana. And what we're seeing are increased cases of toxicity. 
So there's some just some basics you need to know. First of all, are there advantages? Yes, many of us believe there are advantages. The problem is with pets that we don't yet know toxicity levels of the marijuana products that still have THC. Now, CBD, cannabidiol, is pretty safe because there's no THC in CBD or negligible. But if, if you look at the products that are selling, like, for example, Canapet, there are things out there that are selling CBD, uh, which does have a lot of advantages, but it is THC-free. But as far as the other components, especially components like just cannabis oil, the other cannabinoids, we don't know just what the toxic look. Now, we know what LD50 is, and people hear what LD50 means, and they get kind of freaked out. And I don't blame you, because it freaks me out too. But LD50 is a term used when dealing with toxicities of medications, drugs, chemicals, etc., It's the lethal dose 50, the dose at which 50% of the animals receiving it will die. That's the LD50. Now, we know that the LD50 of marijuana, basic marijuana, that's with the THC, is three grams per kilogram. That means a 20-kilo dog, which is about 45 pounds, will need to eat those three grams per kilo, 60 grams. Now, Ah, it's unlikely that you even have 60 grams rolling around, and even more unlikely that your dog is going to eat 60 grams. However, that is a lot. So it's very important to, so that's the LD50. But what we don't know is what is the toxic dose, nor the therapeutic dose. And everyone start is afraid to start testing to see what is therapeutic, what could help, what volume of, of the marijuana with THC can be beneficial. But we can't do that until we know what's toxic, because if we're starting to approach a toxic dose and we still haven't seen the therapeutic benefit, we got to stop the tests because we're going to have cause toxicity. So that is our challenge. And as of yet, we just don't know all the answers. So our recommendation is proceed with extreme caution because we just don't know. Here's one. A rabid coyote in North Carolina actually started attacking a car. The people were inside, the family was inside, and they were watching this rabid coyote trying to bite at and attack the car. So, you know, we do see rabies still. You got to be very careful. The recommendation is if you live in that part of the world, that part of the country in North Carolina, the eastern seaboard, you want to make sure to keep uh, your small pets inside, even your big pets. You know, a rabid animal is, is going after anything or in a, in a very well gated, fenced area. And if you walk them or when you walk them, make sure that if you are them on a nice controlled leash, don't allow them to run up ahead of you. Okay. That's very important. Uh, Also to try to minimize the attraction of these animals, make sure to do something to like secure your garbage cans, things like that. That'll help too. Here's something nice that a lot of people have their issues with zoos and wildlife rehab areas. Let me tell you something. And I, we've been talked about this before. I've been to some that have just been absolutely amazing. But they have a lot of programs and there's an artificial insemination programs going on in many of these zoos. And one that just caught my eye, there is a breed of wolf called the, just a Mexican wolf that 50 years ago was down to 10, obviously estimated, they couldn't count them, but 10 in the wild. Now, because of Many zoos that have breeding programs, artificial insemination, there are greater than 150. So these are helping animals from becoming extinct. And you know, many of them are just amazing facilities. They try to mimic as best they can the natural environments, and they do a really wonderful job. And it's not just to show off so people can walk through and say, ooh, ooh you know, I saw this animal, that animal. They actually do a lot of work, a lot of research to help and to benefit these animals and a lot of these species. Here's one that I... I kind of knew about, and uh, it's nothing new to many of us, but anxious, nervous, depressed people are more likely to be bitten than those that aren't. So if you know somebody that's very calm and relaxed, for some reason, that is not as much of a threat to an aggressive dog. And that explains a lot of things because, you know, when dogs are barking on people, they freeze up, they tense up, they try to run. That's not a wrong thing to do. You got to stay really, really calm. Don't show fear. Hopefully you're not. And remember, dogs can sense it anyway, because I'm sure there are certain pheromones that go off in our bodies when we are, you know, reach that height of fear, of nervousness, anxiousness, and they sense it. And interestingly, uh, in the same study, they found that males are probably more likely to be bitten, and especially those with multiple pets at home. So 
I'm surprised <laughs> if that's true. I should be in a lot more. So I think my calmness uh, sort of overrules all of that around dogs. But you know, look, I have a lot of pets at home. But you can see why, because you know, I tell people, you can have your clothing washed a million times. You can have a dry clean. You can have, you name it, Febreze all over the place. It's not going to fool the dog. So when they start sniffing me, I know, I know they're sensing it. It's funny. I was uh, at an airport and I was walking towards my uh, flight. First, I went to the counter to get my, my boarding pass, and I happened to pass a guy, airport police security, that had a dog with him. And I, you know, commented, it was a German Shepherd. It was a female. She was, you know, kind of nice looking, and, and, uh, and that was it. And I, and I didn't even think twice. So I get my boarding pass. Now I'm walking towards the gate. Now, this same guy with the dog is coming towards me. And, you know, you're not supposed to pet or, you know, kneel down to try to pet dogs that are working. And um, I think this was a, a drug or a bomb sniffing dog, whatever. All of a sudden, as she passes me. She makes a quick U-turn and starts following me. I'm thinking, holy cow, what, what did I pack? I, I was like, what's going on here? So I stop and she starts sniffing me and she's licking me in the face and she like wants to jump in my lap. And the guy, the cop starts laughing. He goes, you have dogs. He said, actually, yes, I have five and six cats. And he goes, she knows it. But it was interesting that her behavior and posturing was so much different than it would be had I been, you know, had drugs or a bomb or something because they're taught to do something differently. So he knew right away. But the thing is, it's amazing how this dog was able to sense and knew that I had a house full of pets. And one last thing before we go on a break, because this is very important. And there's always a battle going on between should you feed your pets raw food, raw meats or not. This, I'm not a fan, never have been. The digestive system is so different. And here's a case in point. Dogs eating raw chicken, especially necks, are 70% more likely to develop a paralysis weakness because of a Campylobacter infection that causes polyradiculoneuritis. So that's my point that our dogs' ancestors, wolves in the wild, their bodies were able to kill off this Campylobacter infection, but our modern domesticated dogs can't. So you just understand that there are risks with eating raw meats that have not been somehow treated to kill off bacteria that our animals, our dogs, can no longer fight off themselves. So exercise, caution out there. You know, check with companies if you're really into feeding raw foods. Make sure there's something going on in the process of the curing the meats that will kill off these uh, bacteria. Anyway, don't go away. We'll be right back here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Best Dr. Jeff. We'll be back. We'll be right back right after these messages. Stay tuned. If you've ever shared your home and heart with a charmingly naughty animal who's always up to mischief, you'll fall in love with the Klepto Kitty who stars in Talk to the Paw by Melinda Metz. Talk to the Paw is a funny, heartwarming novel about a single girl, a single guy, and MacGyver, an adorable tabby cat with a not-so-adorable habit of stealing from the neighbors. Talk to the Paw is on sale now everywhere books are sold. Visit kensingtonbooks.com for more info. You know that feeling when you go to clean the litter box and it's a complete disaster? Yeah, we've got you covered. Introducing World's Best Cat Litter Zero Mess, the advanced litter that gives you two times better clumping and more odor control with less litter. Zero Mess combines the concentrated power of corn with super absorbent plant fibers. Translation, scoop once and you're done. Find it at a pet store near you and save $2. Visit www.saveonworldsbest.com. Does your dog itch, scratch, stink, or shed like crazy? Come to Dynavite for help. Order a 90-day supply of Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Pick up two tubes of Doggo Suds. Get the third tube free. Peppermint, tea tree, lavender, Doggo Sud shampoo. Made with all natural coconut, jojoba, aloe. Great for healthy skin and soft, shiny coats. But no itchy, harsh chemicals. Lather up, rinse away. Try Doggo Suds. Buy two, get one free. At Dynavite.com. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet 
And welcome back. You're here live with Dr. Jeff. And as I'm sitting here having my uh, sort of morning coffee, I hope you guys can see this. Cat hair? Don't care. Appropriate for me with six cats here in the house. I don't care. But uh, anyway, I, I saw this and um, it was, um, I figured, oh, this is a, a must, a must get. So um, National Pet Dental Health Month, every February. And uh, let's talk about that for a second. First of all, by show of hands, how many of you brush your pet's teeth regularly, uh, three, four times a week? I'm not surprised. My hands shouldn't be up either because I don't. We really need to get animals in a, you know, the best in-home care that we can do, all right, would be brushing teeth. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of pets don't like it. A lot of people don't like doing it, a lot of pet owners. So it becomes like a real problem. So, you know, we have to kind of, you know, think about what sort of, you know, home dental care we can do. First of all, when it comes to our pets, you need to start early when they're little. What I recommend doing is this. Take first your finger, identify the treat that your pets really like. And trust me, I guarantee things exist that most pets will like. What you do is that you can take your finger, rub it inside their gums, just like this, and then go just for like five seconds. They go, oh my God, you're so good. You're so good girl, good boy. And give them that treat. That's it. Tomorrow, do it for 10 seconds and then 15 seconds and 30 seconds. Get to you build up when they start knowing that every time you go near them with your finger, they're going to get a treat. They will start chilling out. Then what you can do is put a little bit of a poultry flavored or some sort of um, pet toothpaste um, that is non-sudging, that is swallowable, and do the same thing, but now with the, the, the taste. And again, every time you do it, you know, you make it fun, make it exciting, and then you will give them a treat. Then what you can do is you can get these little sleeves, these little rubber things that fit over your fingers and start using that instead of just your finger. And you get the point. And then you do that, slowly increasing each time and with the paste and until they love it, they are, they're looking forward to it. And then finally, you can get the appropriate size toothbrush and do the same thing. Always make it fun. Never a chore. Always finish with a treat, reward, good, good, good boy, good girl, the pets on the head, whatever. So they start realizing that this is fun. Now, that's only home care. Now, when you think about the film inside the mouth on the teeth, we call that plaque. That is removable with good brushing, with good hygiene. But once it, because of saliva and the bacteria in the mouth hardens and becomes tartar or calculus, brushing is not going to do the job. And um, either is the water additive and the gel that you put inside the mouth. These are all good. And they're better than nothing. But even with all the brushing, just as we do, we brush two, three times a day, we still have to go in regularly for our, te- our professional cleanings. And cats are no different. Now, quickly, I want to talk about that. Dental cleanings. The, are the biggest problem that I see are people going to these groomers that are trying to brush teeth. And by the way, they do a wonderful job from what you can see. I actually used to have one. She was a former dental hygienist. She would come and she'd do a great job. No anesthesia. It blew my mind how she can get these animals to just chill and relax and scrape away and, and soft music and dark light. I mean, it was wonderful. She did a great job. However, veterinary dentist, a colleague of mine, he did a study a couple of years ago. It's been published. And I found it fascinating and frightening at the same time. What he did was he, he identified a large group of animals, dogs, owners that were taking their dogs to these groomers for complete non-anesthesia dentistry. Then he also identified a group, same size group of animals, of owners that were taken there once or twice a year to the veterinarian. And what he did for cleaning with sedation, and we're going to talk about sedation anesthesia in a second because that's a fine line. As he followed, he took pre and post pictures. And he also, what he didn't tell either group was that he was going to take pre and post, uh, not pre, but post radiographs. He compared the pictures. And admittedly, the groomers, these people that are trained to do it properly, did a very nice job removing the plaque from the surface of the teeth. He said, you'd pick your dog up, you'd pick up the lift, you'd look around and say, oh my God, how beautiful is that? And it was. But what the x-rays showed that after three years, the bone destruction on the non-sedated, non-anesthetized group, why? Because I don't care how great your dog is, there's no way, no way you can get in an awake dog scraping under the gums and doing a really thorough job. So the surface of the teeth, no problem. But under the gums, which is where you really have to get, because that's where the source of the bacteria and the infection is going, which is eating away the attachment of the tooth to the bone. That's where the problem lies. That's what we call periodontal disease. And so it was continuing even in the group that the surface of the teeth looked great. So it just can't be done well. 
So much so that a lot now, a lot, many of the state regulatory agencies, the, the, the state veterinary medical associations are dictating that if a non-veterinarian or a technician under direct veterinary supervision touches a metallic instrument to the surface of a tooth, quote unquote, practicing veterinary medicine without a license. Now, the American Veterinary Medical Association and the American Animal Hospital Association are now insisting that animals that are receiving dental work must be intubated, which now takes me to the full anesthesia versus a deep sedation. Anytime, and, and the, the point is the same doctor who actually did the study, Dr. Jan Bellows, supports this. And his point is that if a dog or a cat enough to be able to be intubated, meaning an endotracheal tube passed down their throat, then they are down enough to handle the correct cleaning procedures. So, you know, we do have a combination since I stopped doing the quote anesthesia free. We do a anesthesia light using a medication that I love. It puts them down. They, we intubate them. They're on oxygen. They're hooked up to oxygen, which means if the procedure is getting a little bit too much for them, if they are feeling it, even though they have, they're on pain medication, all we have to do is turn on the anesthetic gas and clients know that. But it is not only that for your for pet safety. I'm sure you heard of a technique called ultrasonic scaling. Your own dentist probably uses it on you. We use it all the time. What that's doing is that is taking the plaque, which is comprised of minerals, saliva, bacteria, and the food debris, or I should say the tartar, and it's aerosolizing it. If you don't have some sort of protection preventing that aerosolized material, which is bacteria, to go down into the trachea, into the lungs, you can cause some respiratory infections. So the endotracheal tube, not only does it, is it a direct line to the airways. So in case there's an emergency, you already have the tube in place. You can start oxygen. You can put medication down there. What do you need to do? But the tube is preventing the aerosolized debris from getting into the lung field. Safety as well. So bottom line, mental health month, do not be fooled cautious about going to these groomers that are not being supervised and performing cleanings on your pets. In many states, it's actually against the law. Check with your veterinarian. Now, what I will tell people sometimes, because they do a wonderful job of keeping the surface of the teeth clean, if you want to go to your veterinarian for full sedation slash anesthesia, deep cleaning, et cetera, once a year, that's great. And then at the six month point or a couple of times a year, go to the groomer to make sure the surface of the teeth remain clean. That's a great idea because that way you'll have less debris to, to work its way under the gums if you do a really good job keeping the surface of the teeth clean. The way to use it, if you're going to use it for a minute, that it's going to replace professional cleaning by your veterinarian patient with your pet intubated, a thorough cleaning done, which is getting under the gums. And also that way they can take dental x-rays and see to evaluate what is going on that you cannot see. And trust me, there is no way, let me repeat, no way that you can take dental x-rays in a wake animal. So, and not only that, but the little disc is everything is digitized now. We use digital x-rays just like your dentist does. That thing that he puts in your mouth that you're told don't bite, <laughs> good reason. That ranges anywhere from probably seven to $10,000. So there's no way a veterinarian is going to put that into a dog's mouth who's awake. A mouth gag, they're, they're sedated. So you just cannot afford to a dog biting down on that thing. So, Justin, I hope you learned something here in National Pet Dental Health Month. Take care of your pet teeth. Do something on a regular basis at home, but it does not replace thorough checkups by your veterinarian at least once a year. And then maybe as pets get older, more frequently. So anyway, let's get a hold of me here at Dr. Jeff at PetLifeRadio.com. Uh, you can join me on Instagram at Dr. Jeff Werber. I'd love to have you follow me. You'll see really, really cute pictures that I take a lot. Um, and also I do some educational videos just like I'm doing now. But of course, they have to stay within a minute. And, um, and that's it. So uh, anyway, we'll see you here next week here on Pet Life Radio's Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff. Have a great week, everybody, and um, see you. Stay safe. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.